Yo, what's poppin' my people? It's your boy Crooks the Great back at you guys with another banger of a UFC 5 video. And in today's video, I'm gonna be reacting slash breaking down some of the things that Romero17 touched on in his video uh, of his fight against Marshall Mind. So as you guys can see, I'm not gonna have the camera because unfortunately, my webcam and plus Romero's webcam is pretty much gonna take up the whole entire bottom of the screen. So I didn't want to do that to you guys that haven't watched the fight. So uh, yeah, I'm not going to be having my webcam up, but I am going to be pausing it and breaking down and telling you guys what I think about some of the things that he was talking about in the video. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started on the video. Hey everybody, we got some more UFC 5 gameplay featuring myself versus Marshall Mind. This time I'm going to be using Jose Aldo, those of you who have followed me on this channel for quite some time y'all know how i rock with aldo and we're going against uh marshall now first off before i even say this before we even get started on this video romero is known for using jose aldo he is um different content creators have different are known for their staple fighter so myself i'm known for using cub swanson uh prioxis is known for using rda uh, Ozzy's known for using Nate Diaz. Every content creator has their staple fighter. And Jose Aldo happens to be the person for Romero. So he's probably the best Jose Aldo player in all of UFC 4. And heading into UFC 5, I predict he's probably going to be the best Jose Aldo player again. So it's going to be him with Jose Aldo going up against Ilya Tapuria, which is going to be Marshall Mine. Mine's Ilya Tapuria. Now, Ilya Tapuria, he has a level 5 snap jab. And a lot of players were wondering after like seeing the video, they're like, oh, like was the jab changed for like everybody or all just a regular jab? So Marshall brought it up in the video, but like the snap jab ha hadn't been nerfed yet. The regular jab that Aldo had was like nerfed. There was up obviously like, other concerns with like the gameplay and whatnot, mainly regarding the stamina. But what I'll tell you is that this is the fight that made EA go and say, yeah, the stamina is too high. So it was good. Okay, before he gets into the the stamina being a problem, UFC 5, they have adjusted the jabs, right? So if you guys have watched my previous videos, they did talk about the jab getting nerfed, um, which is going to be the jab. The, the moving forward jab is going to be slightly toned down. So you're not going to be able to close the distance with jabs like you do in UFC 4. So that's going to make it a little bit tougher for guys that are pressure fighters to just stay in your face consistently. And, and that's kind of what they were aiming for when they tweaked this, uh, when they did tweak the jab. Um, and I believe the jab is going to do less damage on block, I believe. I could be capping, but I'm 95% sure that that's what I heard that they're doing to the jab as well. It's going to do less damage on block, which is going to save... A lot of you guys from being block breaked in UFC 5. So that is incoming. But he's talking about the stamina right now. So let's go ahead and listen to that. Good for them to see when the game is played like at a high level, how much, how very forgiving the stamina really was. And I think that's always an important thing to show people. Because the thing is, when you have a casual audience that's playing, right? They're going to be throwing overhands, head kicks, body kicks, all, all these big lunging looping strikes and they'll probably gas out even with this much stamina but with the way the short-term and long-term stamina work if you guys have seen my stamina management video this is like it's very forgiving with the stamina and i'm pretty happy that this fight was able to kind of show them that yeah it's, it's, it's pretty it's pretty forgiving however it didn't stop it from being a great fight and we're gonna go take a watch at it here all right so basically what he's saying for those of you guys that aren't really into the super technical aspects of like the systems and how they work in the game. These stamina bars you guys are going to notice are very considerably bigger than the ones in UFC 4. Which means it's going to make for a lot more strikes being thrown. But really what he's talking about in terms of the striking, stand, uh, the striking stamina and stamina usage in general. Is these not draining as much as they should. Which can be a problem. You hear a lot of people complaining about it in UFC 4. You get these outrageous striking totals at the end of each round so imagine in ufc 4 we have 150 strikes being thrown in a round right with the stamina bar being the way it is right now the stamina bar is bigger here so that's going to make 
for more total strikes that you can throw in a round, which isn't very realistic. Very few guys are throwing 150 strikes, total strikes in a round. I I really, I don't see Ilya Taporia really doing it. Um, I mean, unless you see guys like, you think guys like, you know, like Nate Diaz could do it, Max Holloway, the high cardio guys that aren't heavy punchers do that. But it's not routine that you see over 100 total strikes thrown in a round. It's not very realistic. But with these stamina, with this stamina bar, that was an issue in US in the beta. Um, coming from experience, I had a fight, and I'll tell you guys, I had a fight against Swiss Labix, and literally he just frame trapped the shit out of me, <laughs> pretty much with the stamina system. He would break my block. And when I thought, hey, you know what? He's going to be out of stamina. He'd still have about 50% stamina to break through my block. And that could really cause a lot of trouble for a lot of newer to intermediate fighters against elite level fighters to just get trapped when, with, uh, with a block break and somebody still have 50% stamina. So he's talking about, you know, this fight right here really made EA reevaluate the stamina consumption. Uh, and making it a little bit more realistic, which is going to be nice. It's going to make people have to really be cautious with the stamina on the feet as well as on the ground. So this is overall a really a, an amazing fight because I've watched this already before I broke it down for you guys or before I started breaking it down for you guys. It really is a really great fight, but still you could tell. And he'll he'll talk about it during the fight, the stamina consumption. You'll see it's, it. It could really be a problem if they didn't fix it right the right way. But let's get it started. And I'll try to break down a little bit of my thought process as I was playing Marshall. Jabs really, really quickly. You're going to have to adjust to that a little bit. Right there, I'm throwing a, a combination. All right, we're going to skip the walkouts and just get straight to the fight. Anthony Romero. He's trying to get me out of there. I'm able to move my head and survive. Here we go. FC5 gameplay on this channel. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. As you can see... All right. Start the volley. Now, I want you guys to see this right here. And there's going to be a lot. You're going to hear a lot of dead space in between him talking. Um, But I want to let you guys know. And he kind of, he po Romero points this out during the video. Marshall Mind is a very, very good player. Romero does not play like this against everybody. And for those of you guys that have fought Romero on UFC 4 and that will fight him on UFC 5, he does not take his time like he does with, with Marshall Mind in this fight. And he doesn't pressure him and really fight the way he does against everybody because of the high-level player that Marshall Mind is. So kudos to Marshall Mind for, number one, being a really good player. But number two, being a, a good enough player to really push Romero to fight in a different way. And I feel like that's that's something that he doesn't get enough credit for. And Marshall Mind, because Marshall Mind really is a good player. When I fought him in UFC 4 with my Cub Swanson against his Jose Aldo, it was very, very tough. I'm not going to I'm not gonna cap to you. It was pretty tough to, to get a win over Marshall Mind. So he's a very, very good player. So I just wanted to state that. Before this fight gets in, gets in a little bit too deep. You guys have been asking if I will be able to upload a match versus him, and uh, as you can see, it has been approved. And here we go, man. A lot of this fight was done. Stand so key thing too, I'm trying to like, when I'm doing like this build and I'm testing and I'm playing, I'm always trying to try to emulate the fighter and seeing how well it works. But I am noticing like as I'm playing, I'm like it's really difficult. Mainly that snap jab is really strong, but with some things with the tracking that needs to be adjusted. Oh, that was beautiful though. Beautiful, beautiful counter. Like I was noticing that the footwork was a bit too forgiving on some of these whiffs, and that's something I would like for them to adjust for sure. Now, for those of you guys that need a, a better understanding of what he means right there, footwork being too friendly to somebody when they whiff in UFC four, we had this problem as well. Somebody would whiff a strike and before you could counter it, they would move out of the pocket. 
that is not very realistic. Um, if somebody misses a shot, you should have a little bit more of a window to punish them for making an improper read or for to give you the benefit of making the proper read, give you a reward for making the proper read instead of allowing somebody to just whiff a strike. And then because they're the footwork is the way that it is, them just be able to back out of the way of your punish. So that's more of what he means. Hopefully we do see that because I do see a lot of elite level players being able to get away with throwing strikes um, and whiffing and being able to exit the pocket. It'll make it a little bit more, the countering a little bit more viable in terms of, hey, you made the right read. Now you get to punish them and there's no way they're going to be able to exit out of the pocket before you get that punish. It's going to make for better countering, a better countering system, and it's going to make the offensive player a little bit more cautious with the strikes that they're throwing, which is also going to in turn decrease the strike volume. So that's what I believe he's talking about. And uh, with the footwork, you know, not uh, kind of being more friendly to fighters than it should be. And hopefully they do adjust that for UFC 5 on launch. when I'm trying to be very competitive. And let me tell you, bro, Ilya Tuporia feels incredible. Yes, he does. Uh, we've tested him versus the likes of Conor McGregor, versus the likes of Alexander Volkanovsky. And, bro, he is a fantastic matchup against every... I don't believe in this build that we've had access to the leg kicks affecting, like, the lateral movement as much, which is something I really hope they stick to their word and make work. And that body kick... So something I was kind of noticing. I'm Preach it. Preach it. This is what we've been asking for with the leg kick. So I'm glad Romero brought this out in his video. And I'm glad he's making it a point to tell the devs leg kicks need to, a, need to affect lateral movement. It needs to affect player uh, fighters' movement speeds. So you don't just continue to chop at somebody's legs and they move at the same speed. That's not... That's not realistic, nor is it conducive to people wanting to leg kick. I mean, leg kicks, I feel like in UFC 4, are very... They're not really a viable tactic because people just think, hey, you know what? If, if somebody leg kicks me, or if I leg kick somebody, I'm just opening myself up to get hit in vulnerability, which should not always be the case. If you're chopping at somebody's leg from the outside... And you get enough of their of the leg health down, you should affect their movement speed, and that's something that we have been asking for. And I've heard the community, not just myself, ask for. So hopefully that that is something that they do implement into the game. Like sometimes it's landing, and it's not really making the full on physical contact with the shin, or it's landing a little bit with the foot, but it's getting like the full hit reaction. Like there, that's fine. But I'm noticing I notice a couple times. It doesn't make the full-on physical contact and cause the hit stun. Try to avoid that there. Get caught by a beautiful sequence from Marshall. Slip the overhand. But you see, right, even though I didn't time that counter there with the said overhand, I would have liked for that whip. You see right there, that body kick landed. Um, The overhand, after I slipped that, I would like to see like where it, it's a little bit harder to still kind of slide back and block. So adjustments still have to be made. And I'm, I'm obviously losing this round. He got a big stun off the counter. My stamina is actually getting cooked right now. And then the damage icon appears. So when this damage icon appears and it's damage to the eye, this is going to result, if he keeps targeting the right side of my eye, that's where the damage is at. So jabs, lead high kicks, lead overhands, lead hooks. The more he lands there, he's going to aggravate that cut and he can get extra damage in that position. It's also going to affect my accuracy stat a bit. So I got to be really careful with Aldo here. And I'm basically just managing risk accordingly. Now, that is super important for those of you guys that didn't play the beta to understand. These, stat these little icons up here are crucial. They're crucial to understand. Like, you need to understand when you get hit, it will give you kind of a, well, no, not not for the cut, not for the cuts above the eye or below the eye, but when you break your nose, there will be an icon, and you'll actually hear an audio break 
in your um, in your headphones. So being aware of that and then being able to figure out, hey, you know what? This is what it's going to affect. It's going to be super important because like he said right here with the eye cut, it's going to affect your block speed to this side and it's going to affect your accuracy as well. So you need to be cognizant of when you have these because the more damage you take, the more the longer this icon is going to appear and the more time your your uh your disadvantages are going to be in play. side of his face so yep. every time i attack him on that side he's actually going to take more damage it's it's something new in the game and it's something to definitely keep an eye on and again with the doctor stop with the doctor stoppage icon the more it gets red it starts off yellow but the more it gets red of course it and i want to point something out because you guys see me overhand a lot on miss kicks this has is a lot more time specific you can't just launch overhands from downtown like you do in UFC 4. You have to be on strict timing with it because the kicks are a lot faster in UFC 5. Um, so you can't just... And the overhands are, I think, a tad bit slower. So you got to be very much on the reads if you're going to be overhanding miss kicks. Closer we are to the doctor actually entering the octagon, assessing the cut, if it's bad enough, he might stop it. Boom! Beautiful overhand right there. Overhand to the body shot. Beautiful. To the head. Look at that. Beautiful. One more time. Boom! All right. Yo, I'm going to need y'all to be with me when I tell y'all that Marshall always undersells himself as a really good player. He is much better than he gives himself credit for. That was a beautiful sequence of combinations. So the now, truth. I recognize that I'm already down one round. I have to be careful with Ilya Tapura's inside boxing, which is why I'm trying to lower the health on his legs, right? And as you guys can see, right, you know, we both do a bit of, a bit of a lot, you know, my stamina. Now, before he gets into this, let me back this up. This is something that you guys have seen me use quite a bit. You guys have seen me, when I'm trying to box somebody, trying to leg kick them to lower their leg health. This comes into play in these type of matchups because it's going to lower Ilya Taporia's power. Now, to the degree to uh, in the degree of how much it's going to, we don't know. That's a good question that maybe I would probably ask EA, maybe I'll ask Romero or, or Marshall how much it actually lowers the, the the speed and power. But that is a viable strategy for those of you guys that just like to box. That's why I'm able to just push the pace on people in UFC 4 and, uh, and kind of box is those leg kicks. Number one, they lower the power and the speed. But number two, they, they create that, that high-low effect that you use, um, that you would want to use if you're trying to go down to the body. So if you don't feel comfortable throwing body punches or body kicks or anything like that, just chop the legs. Chop the legs, then get inside the pocket and start trying to exchange with boxing combinations. So that's basically what Romero is saying he's trying to do right here to Marshall. I'm trying to lower the health on his legs, right? And as you guys can see, right, you know, we both threw a bit of, a bit of a lot, you know. My stamina took a little bit more of a hit than his did, but I still think that the return fire in between rounds has been a lot. But he did land some clean body work, tries to go to the body there, gets nailed by the good old fashioned Wombo combo. And with Jose Aldo, he has a level five double flying knee so i'm really looking to use that double flying knee if the opportunity presents itself a lot of times i'm trying to break the rhythm of marshall trying to get him to read certain things as well because this is a good process notice i go for the slip counter i miss it and i preemptively move my head out of the way after i slip after i go for the slip counter so something that aldo max holloway Volkanovski, they do this a lot so they avoid return fire after they go for a missed counter see that there, I fainted the shot, got the lead hook reaction, so I have a mental, mental awareness there. But beautiful slip cross counter from Marshall there. All right, now he he said a lot, but this is the point in the video of the breakdown where I want you guys to go back and rewatch this as many times as you need to in order to understand what Romero is talking about. Number one, before I even get started, I want to tell you guys about the wombo combo. The wombo combo is a jab, uppercut, lead hook. 
That's the wombo combo. When you hear somebody talking about a wombo combo, whether it be Romero, me, Marshall, uh, you know, anybody that you watch that's been around for a long time, that's the wombo combo. The jab, rear hook, lead uppercut. Or jab, rear uppercut, lead hook. I'm over here just mixing up my damn strikes. But what he was saying about uh, mixing up the, the tempo as well as, um, you know, trying to make different reads and stuff like that. It's and, and setting your opponent up to look and, and feel certain things. That's super important because being able to mix up tempo and being able to fight at an off rhythm pace is super important if you're trying to play this game at the highest levels. Because you're going to see most of the fight, they're kind of just going back and forth, back and forth. And that's your typical rhythm of a UFC fight. I punch, I end, then you come forward, you do your thing, I do my thing. you do, And it's that's, that is the rhythm that everybody likes to fight at. So if you're able to break that rhythm with, with feints or throwing an offbeat strike... Or something like that, and just change up the rhythm of your of your striking pattern mid fight. That's where KOs happen against really high level people. That's where the damage you're able to get the damage off. That's where you cause a lot of confusion to your opponent when you're fighting them. That's very crucial to being a high level striker and being able to beat guys like Marshall and Romero. So, like I said, go back and rewatch that as many times as you need to in order for you to understand it. Because the better understanding you have of that, the more, more there's a higher chance you're going to be a high level striker in UFC 5 straight off the rip. So, go back and rewatch that if you need to. Overhand again, goes up right there. I get rocked. I get rocked again. Watch me. Watch me again. Oh, the barrage are right here. I get sucked out. Now, I, I want to go back and before he starts talking, I want to go back and I want you guys to watch this. He loads, he rocks Marshall, right? Right there, I get rocked. He throws a combination, and instead of him normally backing up or standing there and letting his stamina rebuild up, he waits for a split second. Marshall lets his block down to try to get his block health back, not really anticipating that Romero is going to throw throw anything, and then he gets caught with a flying knee. And Marshall tries to block it, but he's not able to get his block up in time. And then he gets rocked again. Get rocked again. Flying knee, watch me again. Oh. And that right there is what we're talk what I was talking about with off rhythm striking. You changing up the tempo of the of the striking pace that you're putting on somebody. That's a prime example, a perfect example of what I'm talking about. That's how you catch and put away high level opponents. Throwing offbeat strikes, throwing offbeat combinations will get you the damage that you're looking for. So now he did it and now he's got Marshall in a lot of trouble. The barrage are right here. I get sucked and here's the thing. If you notice those icons appeared. And when those icons appear, you see the one that's right next to the eye, that's referring to the lungs. And when the lung icon appears, it affects the short-term stamina recovery of the person who's received that icon during that time, and it's yellow. So what that means is, during that time, when your short-term stamina is recovering, you have increased bleed-through damage that can happen. It is much harder for you to stay in exchanges. You have to be really careful when you're throwing. Now, we're down on the ground, so... I'm not able to posture up and land too much damage and strikes. He's able to recover down and guard. The game lags a little bit. It's not the game itself. I think it's uh, Marshall's connection. You know, he's a busy guy. Has a lot of uh, electronics there. So it's definitely not my connection. It's definitely Marshall's. But it's a good. It's a good. This is a good competitive round. Got the knockdowns to kind of return from that really bad round one. Still being really careful. Notice, I'm not trying to throw too much. If I'm going to throw something, it needs to land on something. Because having a big heavy whiff against somebody like Marshall is going to cost me. And if you're wondering why they're kind of just being cautious like this, it's because both of these guys have these health icons. They've both sustained some heavy damage in this round. 
uh, Marshall got a broken nose with those with that lung animation was kind of just basically given away is that Marshall has broken his nose. Um, so he's he sustained a lot of heavy damage in this round. So they're just kind of trying to ride it out and to be able to get some recovery heading into the third round. So that's why they're kind of just fighting more more cautiously. They're not trying to eat anything heavy. They're just trying to make it back to their stools to be able to recover for the third round. Like the cross. New lead overhand animation from Jose Aldo. I love that. There's that new rear hook animation from Jose Aldo. He has the high level rear hook as well as the high level lead body hook. I believe Toporia, he has also a high level rear hook, but his animation looks dumb clean. Like it's really sneaky. And he tries to clinch me. Ooh, and right there, right, at the end second of the round, that icon, the same one that affects his stamina recovery, turned red. Now, we've already established earlier in this video that the stamina, the stamina needs to get tweaked again, and EA definitely didn't notice that. That should really have affected his stamina recovery in between the rounds, especially because it got to that set point. So I'm wondering, with regards to tuning stamina recovery between rounds when something breaks, how much of a percentage of the long term should be affected with regards to recovery let me know in the comments what you guys think but we're that is the truth because look at where their stamina is at basically romero broke marshall's nose in the second round he did a lot of damage to that nose in the second round he landed that uppercut at the end of the at the end of the second round right there broke his nose and even caused it to get red why does marshall have this much stamina left and this is what he's saying with EA needed to tweak the stamina because he still has, they've thrown a lot of strikes in this, in this fight. Well over probably about a buck 50 to 200 each. I would say they've thrown a lot of strikes and they both have absorbed a lot of damage. Why are their stamina bars still this high? That's what he's saying. And what he mentioned too, in terms of the, the stamina recovery in between rounds is true. If you have a broken nose, a severely broken nose, it really should compromise you. Uh, it should compromise you how much your stamina bar refills in between rounds. Now, I'm not saying to go overboard on it, but maybe do it like Fight Night Champion had, or I believe Undisputed has it as well, to where it decreases a percentage of your uh, of your recovery. You know what I mean? Based off of you know, just based off of how much damage you've absorbed and how your how your durability is and stuff like that, you know? Now I I would love to see it too. I would love to see, you know, this this uh stamina bar go down for a severely broken nose in between rounds. Because then you're just kind of getting people that are surviving and still having a crap ton of stamina as the rounds go on with severely broken noses and, and different stuff like that. So We're here in round three against Marshall, goes with the cross. I thought he was gonna go straight lead uppercut. I sidestep the cross counter and I'm able to land when he has low short-term stamina, opens up the nose injury again. Try to tell him a slip inside lead hook counter, but it kind of disappeared, but you know, that's what happens with these builds. We're at 720p60. Oh, yeah, we, we can go 4K, but yeah, get them we'll, get them things out there. Get them things out there, Meryl. Turn the quality up. 4K be crazy. Should slow down my damn laptop. And, okay, and I'm gonna give y'all a little tip. When y'all miss, when y'all miss a counter and your short-term stamina is low, that is usually when players are looking to target you there. Woo! Hold on, we gotta run that back. Okay. Cause a lot of stuff could have went wrong for me there, but it went really good for me. Right? So we're going to pay attention to this exchange. So he goes to Now once again, this is going to be a moment where he's going to drop. I'm sorry, Mero, I know you, you you look like you're blind right here, but uh this is one of the moments that you need to go back and rewatch it as many times as you need to to understand it because he's going to drop a lot of knowledge on you guys right here. And this is again is going to be crucial to being a high-level striker in UFC 5. So I'm going to let him talk through it, and then we'll break it down. To the slip straight, he's at a short-term stamina disadvantage, right? So his is recovering a little bit slower. He goes one, two, three. There's the bleed through, right? Because my 
My block is low. I have a lot of damage already on the right side of my face. So he gets a nice clean one through through the block. I return fire back. He goes for the jab. Remember the rule about the stamina. And here, this is something I don't like. They got to fix this. I go to duck. The duck is already aimed there, but I don't know if it's an accuracy thing. But the straight lands on me and it hit stuns me. And I'm like, ah, oh, you got to be kidding me. However, look at the icon though. The icon is preventing his short-term stamina to recover fast. So he goes for this overhand. Look at my stamina and look at Marshall's stamina. So when I go and I fire off this cross, I'm going to win this exchange. And I stun him real hard. Okay, so basically in that whole exchange, what he was talking about was Marshall had this this icon already up. It wasn't red, it was yellow. So he was at a short-term stamina disadvantage. So anytime he threw his short-term stamina was going to take maybe a split second to two split seconds longer to refill than Romero's. And that that's what he was trying to show with the breakdown. And that's why Marshall got caught with that straight lead hook because his stamina bar was all the way down here and Romero's was up here, which is what a lot of people are going to get caught up on when they play UFC 5 and when if they don't pay attention to these icons... That's why I was un I was telling you guys, go back and re-watch what he says in this video as many times as it takes for you to understand. Because if you don't pay attention to these icons and you are just walking forward, launching at an opponent because their block is all the way broken and you get caught and you get pissed off, this is what this is why that is happening. And a lot of you guys are gonna get put in these scenarios by elite level players. So if they're being inefficient with their stamina and they have a broken nose or they're compromised in any kind of way, whether you know, I think it's more so with broken noses with the with the short term stamina. These are the moments where you can take advantage and turn the fight because this is a fight change could be a fight changing moment uh, right here because Marshall was super confident. He was landing on Romero. Romero timed it out beautifully and now he got the knockdown and now He's broken that nose even more. And now Marshall is going to have to weigh his options. Do I be aggressive? Do I change up my game plan? And now you start making your opponent have to think, which a lot of you guys know, thinking when you're fighting against an elite level fighter isn't the best way to go. You need to be able to do a lot of things just off muscle memory and not always thinking. And this is going to put a lot of strain on Marshall as well because he's going to have to make split decisions and hope that Romero doesn't read him. So it puts him in a very bad spot just off of him not knowing that his nose, that he was at a, or not remembering, maybe not, he knows, but just not remembering that he was at a short-term stamina disadvantage. Yeah, okay, I see. I definitely see what needs to get adjusted here. See right there how it's gotten red to that point. That long-term stamina bar should get also get affected by the nose breaking. I think that it should be when it's like green or you know it's early. It's like about a five percent decrease on a long-term bar. When it's yellow, it should be ten to fifteen percent decrease on a long-term bar during that round. And then when it's red, it should be about twenty-five percent reduction or twenty percent reduction on the long-term portion of the bar. Now there, Marshall does affect. Now, I'm wondering if he means, like, immediately on getting the red bar. I'm wondering if that's if that's what he means. If he's talking about more, if you get if you get a broken nose, I'm going to clarify that, actually, with him. I'll, I'll shoot him a text or message him on Twitter or something. If he, if he meant, like, immediately once you get a red bar that your, your, your long-term stamina drops by 25%. Because, I mean, that would be realistic. It would be realistic, and I mean, it would be drastic, so maybe not 25, maybe like 20 to 15, but that would be pretty realistic. 
fantastic job of reversing the arm triangle attempt. Gets the mount. I'm able to escape. Tries to go to full mount one more time. I'm thinking about the Kimura from here, but at the same time, I don't want to risk him denying it and then going for an arm triangle. Marshall has some pretty, pretty nasty submissions. I go up to Sprawl. It's a very fast transition that I'm looking to do here. We're familiar with the meta here since UC4. But I thought I was close, and motherfucker got me in the guillotine counter very sh- Ooh, look at them things. Ain't been seeing guillotine counters since UFC 3. Not gonna lie. These were very viable in UFC 3. You'd get caught with a lot of uh, submission gui like guillotine counters in UFC 3. It's crazy. So I'm glad to see that they've, they've brought this back. And I'm glad that Ilya Taporia has it as well, because- he is a very high-level jujitsu player in real life, so I'm glad to see this. Strong entry. So watch the mind games here, right? I deny. He tries to go straight for the sub. And now this time, I actually go for the escape. I got full GA after I denied it. But I waited a half second because I know Marshall's going to try to key in on that denial. But really good mind games on, uh, on both of our parts. They're trying to set up the TBS system. Now... I want you guys to take that and really utilize it. You notice how he said, I waited a split second because I know he was camping on the denial. That's high level stuff. You could use this even if you're still, for those of you guys that are still playing UFC 4, you can use this heading into UFC 5. Once you block something, wait a split second because you're still going to have full GA for at least, I believe, two, three to four seconds. Wait a second, then go for it. Because somebody's just expecting you to go for... Uh, a lot of people will be expecting you to go for a transition or a sub right when you get the full GA. So sometimes, if you just wait a split second after, you'll be able to get the transition or get the guillotine. And in these kind of fights right here, that split second, waiting to, that split second can really mean... It is the difference between getting a submission or getting out of a submission. So... Great words of wisdom right there by Romero. See, with the grappling on the ground, we need more positions. Like, we need more positions. Like, I do love everything with the TBS, but I would love to see more positions on the ground, maybe a little bit more locomotion involved in general, as well as, you know, some clinch changes, more positions in the clinch. Like, we have clinch positions, but we need a lot more. That's my opinion. Never my opinion. That's just facts. Never my opinion. That's facts. We do need more positions. That is big now facts. Now, throwing a lot. Short-term stand is going to take a little bit of time for him. He goes through the guillotine again. Now, here, he's going to go for the struggle mechanic holding R1. And I opt to race it. Look at my stamina, though. But I'm able to escape it. I timed the race correctly. And I was able to escape into half guard. So, like I told y'all, if your stamina is at zero short-term stamina, you're not exactly screwed. It becomes more of an issue if you're getting denied. And then they go for it and they get full GA. But... If they go for it right away, you know, after they've cooked you, you still have a chance to go. Now, this is important for you guys to understand because you guys are going to you guys are going to be getting stuck in compromising positions like this all the time in UFC 5. So, understanding, hey, just because I don't have stamina doesn't mean that you're done. You can race what he what he was calling he Marshall struggled with him and then Romero pretty much did what we like to call racing. When you race your opponent, that just means whoever clicked the button to transition faster is going to get it. Whoever has the GA is going to get it. You're racing your opponent to get out of that position. Because if you don't race, you're going to get subbed. Or your submission bar is going to go down. That's what that means. So the flip side of this is you have to be careful. Because if you have low stamina and you try to race your opponent and they block it there is a high chance that you're going to get hit with a with what I like to call a one-hitter-quitter submission and that you have low stamina and then you just immediately get choked out. And that's, that's, uh, that's a risk. And these are the mind games that are going to be taking place on the ground in UFC 5. So for those of you guys that are newer and that have been wondering about how the submission system is going to work, pay attention. Because this is for you. And even if you're not trying to get the submissions and you're just going to be a defensive grappler, you need to understand that this is the way the game is going to be played. Stamina your opponent has left. Um, your, of course, your submission defense stat and all that. Um, 
Woo! New uppercut animation, the lead uppercut. Right now we have a submission bar, right? So if you're, but keep in mind that one shot submissions are possible in UFC 5. So if you have a significant stamina lead and your opponent is not careful and they don't respect you and. Yeah, so this. Oh! Oh, damn. I forgot. Damn, I be doing shit. I forget I be doing. Oof. That would have been a bad trade if I continued there. Okay, I see the problem. I see the problem. So, I think y'all, I want y'all to be with me on this when I'm going to bring this up to EA, right? That icon, with regards to the short-term stamina, while it is affecting things during the fight with exchanges, it's not affecting enough in between rounds. I want EA to make the, the long-term stamina drain be present in between rounds when the icon is, get, is popping up like that because stamina is way too high in there. Bleeds through, lands a nice head kick. I think it's like a level three head kick. So I'm like, yo, I'm getting busted up right now. I need to start throwing in the takedown threat. Y'all know Aldo, he got the takedown threat. Took down Cheeto, took down Ralph Font. Took down Chan Sung Jung. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Woo-wee! Now, I'm wondering because uh, in Marshall's video, I believe their Corey Sanhagen video, he said that, you know, they kind of nerfed the doctor stoppages a little bit. I'm wondering if they nerfed it a little bit too much because Romero's face right here is absolutely busted up. And I mean, he has the red doctor stoppage icon right here too. And he's just, he just got rocked literally back to back times. So... I'm wondering if they nerfed it maybe a little bit too much. Yeah, and that icon, the Doctor Stoppage icon, is turning. I'm surprised the Doctor isn't in wasn't in yet at this point, but see, even he thinks bloody, so. Bloody, bloodied up. Oof. They also gotta uh, tweak the takedown entries. I do feel like the takedown itself feels so slow if you're not in this range. So that's something they really gotta adjust. There, I feel like it should have been a lot harder for him to block there after that big whiff and return back. That needs to get adjusted. But overall, this is fuck. This is a great fight. Ah, I ducked that. Yeah, I ducked that. Yeah, come on, move it. Ooh. Oh yeah. Whew, what a round. So we definitely see where it needs to get some work for the game for sure before launch. Playing smooth but stamina adjustments, tracking adjustments, but this this is a this is a fun fight I came in front. Now you seen where Marshall um You see, oh, actually, that, that didn't even really play out. But I just want to kind of give you guys a under, better understanding. When you're in backside and you try to take back mount how people would roll and it would throw you into back sitting, that is no longer going to be the case. In case you guys didn't know that, if you if somebody's trying to take back mount and you roll, they're going to get you in back flat. So just, just be aware of that. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that in UFC 5. Look at the elbows in the ground and pound. And Aldo's face is just busted up. Yeah, and usually at this point, like if I see that icon's there, ah, he knew I was going to go for the elbow, and he got up. So they adjusted the ground and pound. This build does have an adjustment. Oh, God. Jeez. Whoa. Oh, my Lord. So they adjusted the ground and pound where, like, if your short-term stamina is really bad and you throw the strike, you're more likely to actually get reversed or an escape happen in a position. UFC 4, it was too easy to get the reversal off of the first strike. So that was the adjustment there. And it's good to see it in action. Thank, and right here, my God. mentality was like, damn, bro. Like, I just got rocked that round. I know I, I stunned him too. Could be 2-2. Two, two. Could be... Oh, my God. Look at the cut. Now, that's what I'm saying. Look at the cuts right here. The cut right here. He has a broken nose. There is more likely a chance that he should have gotten stopped. 
So that's why I'm saying that maybe they nerfed it a little bit too much because this is a lot of damage. A lot of damage. This in real life right here is would get Aldo stopped. The doctor would stop it. Very surprised the doctor did not step in on that one. Of course, he's got his corner checking on him. Like, are you okay, man? You can nah, do this. We, we got to bring the dogs so out. They didn't clean this man up. We got to bring the dogs him. out. Look at the, look at the mat, bro. And I thought about my dad. I got to be careful. Right and it's somewhere. And if I land one and let me tell you something, though, before we keep going. I was thinking to myself, because we were on Messenger. We are talking about my oh, damn, man. I'm kind of busted up. I got to be smart here. I'm like, wait a minute. You're just as hurt as I am. And that's where my mentality switched. But right now, this is what I'm going to say. After all of the damage that we sustain over the course of these four rounds, our long-term stamina should not be like this, right? The, I know these are conditioned athletes. Obviously, this is like the best version of all that we can get. Best version of Tuporia. I understand that. They're the 1% of the 1% of the athletes in MMA. I understand that. However, with the damage that we took, the icons that appeared and everything of that nature, this is too high. We should be at about 50%. Like, you know, 50 and maybe to be generous, 60% long-term bar of stamina after all that damage happened we're at about 75 i think i'm about like a close to like 80 75 80 ish same thing with him that's too high right now in a war like this so with ea this is where we need to see the adjustment with the stamina correlating to the damage and if they tune this properly this game is going to be on fire so we're gonna let this play out right here Shot. That is the truth. Preach it. Couldn't have said it better myself. They, like I said earlier, this damage is not adding up to the stamina bar, which it does need to get nerfed, or else you do, this is going to be a really big problem if they don't fix this by the time UFC 5 is released. One left hook on that side, his face is going to get opened up all over again. Right now, they, they cleaned him up just a little bit, but man... One left hook, and that face is going to get busted open again. There, there's the nose again. Oh, and right here. He got his right block here. broken. He decides, okay, I'm done. And I believe he got the finish right here. He tees off. He tees off. Herb D, stop the fight. Herb, stop. Stop, stop. Oh, Herb D. You fall. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So that's going to be the end of the fight right there. So overall, everything that he broke down the last four minutes, I, I don't I don't really want to get into the 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 last four minutes of it because this video is gonna be long as hell. So I apologize, guys. Some it's gonna be an hour long video, but there was a lot of stuff in this video that I really wanted to break down for you guys, and I wanted to talk to you guys about because this is all important information for you guys heading into UFC five. That's that's really not only important to know, but important to understand. The more you understand this, the better off you're going to be once UFC 5 drops. So go back and rewatch this entire video or even sections of the video if you need to. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know um, what you guys agreed with. If you guys agreed that the stamina needs to be adjusted. You know, what are some things that you guys are super worried about heading into UFC 5 that you guys did see in this fight? Let me know what you guys think is great. Uh, let me know in the comment section. Just give me your overall opinion on, on which, what your comfortability level is of UFC 5 heading into the release day. But until the next video, guys, take it easy. Be safe. Enjoy the rest of your guys' day, afternoon, evening, depending on where you guys are watching this from. And I will see you guys in the next video.